What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and you know what's cool about having such a big YouTube audience? is the fact that you guys give me an endless supply of content topics. You know, when you're an advanced user like myself, sometimes you realize that you are beyond the basics, and sometimes you forget to start where the basics are. And so I'll do something, and then I get a lot of questions about why I did it, and although it makes perfect sense to me and more advanced users, those that don't have a lot of experience with different configurations are probably scratching their head going, well, why did he do that? Did, did, do, did that, whatever. Why did he do that? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today because you guys have seen me do it multiple times where I put a power supply in a case with the fan facing up like this, and that always leads to a ton of questions about why I did that. With its unique freeform modular system, the new Mastercase Maker 5 from Cooler Master allows unparalleled flexibility with its adjustable internal layout and exterior customization options. Learn more about how you can start customizing your own case by following the link down in the description. It's perfectly reasonable that you would ask me why I would mount the power supply with the fan facing up. Because most people would think, well, you know, if you face it down and you're using the vent in the bottom of the case like this, and when you put this in here, the power supply is going to become its own little environment where the air comes in through the bottom, goes to the power supply, comes out, and nothing that happens inside the case is going to be affected by what the power supply is doing. Because remember, air in has to equal air out, otherwise you're gonna have negative pressure. If you have more air coming into the case than what's going out, that's positive pressure, which is actually ideal because you force air to go out of cracks and crevices rather than being pulled in, which is going to limit your dust intake. So then it seems perfectly reasonable that when you do this and you flip the power supply over, you are adding another exhaust fan effectively to the system that's gonna be pulling air from in the case, which means you need more intake to account for that. Well guys, there's a few situations here where you would want to mount the power supply up. Now the first one being, I'm gonna reference my friend's build that I did in my last video where you guys asked me again for about the millionth time, and I should have done this video a long time ago, I apologize for taking so long, the reason why I mounted it up was he tends to put his computers on carpet. He doesn't have a very big desk and he puts his computer down on carpet. He's got nice thick plush carpet, a heavy computer, it squishes down and then this intake starts to get choked off. Now he could have easily done something like gotten a piece of wood or a piece of, of, of like a, even a leftover shelf from like Ikea furniture, put that underneath it and then the carpet's no longer a factor. Since I had no idea what he was gonna be doing and it was a surprise, I went ahead and accounted for the situation I knew existed. Now, lo and behold, since I gave him that system, he thinks it's so pretty, he wants it on display, he has since cleared off a spot on his desk and now it's on his desk. But fortunately, his power supply and a lot of modern power supplies now are very, very efficient. The fans run at a very slow speed and some guys even like this uh, 1200 master watt here from Cooler Master, a lot of EVGA power supplies, Corsair power supplies, the fans don't even turn on unless they exceed a certain efficiency uh, threshold a power draw, which means that they're gonna be unaffected by uh, anything happening in the system and they're not gonna affect anything happening in the system unless you're really pushing your power supply to its limit. So that's another reason why it's good to get a bigger power supply than you think you're gonna need, but that's a topic for another video. Another reason why I would recommend mounting the power supply up like this, if you are not even mounting it on carpet, is if you only have one exhaust fan. A lot of older cases only have one exhaust fan or maybe two exhaust fans, and uh, it's okay to have a neutral pressure, and I actually personally go for a neutral pressure. I don't like to have positive pressure because then it could lead to slight uh, fan noise coming out of cre cracks and stuff, and I like to have neutral pressure. So if I feel like I can balance out the airflow by letting the power supplies fan pull some of that air out, then I'll do that. Not to mention it's also going to get a much cooler supply of air pulling it from inside the case, then having it down here on the bottom because you could end up with this bit of a, a loop here where it pulls air into the bottom, exhausts it, and then it's pulled back in and it just cycles through and it starts to warm up over time. So this is actually the coolest config, both in just kind of looks and you know pure functionality. That, that was a joke, it was a bad one, I get it. This is actually one of the cooler methods here for your power supply. Okay, so then when would you mount it down? Well, I think most people by default are gonna mount it down, but sometimes you're forced to do that. Like in the NZXT case over here where a lot of cases are now implementing this bit of a um, shroud right here to kind of neaten things up so you don't see any of the wires and such. Now when you do this, you're pretty much forced to mount it down because as you can see, the intake is on the bottom there, it's filtered, and that's the only place it's gonna be able to really draw cool air from. Otherwise, the fan is gonna be right up against the bottom of this uh, shelf here, if you will, 
and then it's gonna be kind of, kind of getting choked off. Now, a lot of cases though, do have kind of a stilt system in there where the power supply sits on some pretty thick feet. So there's a gap before the bottom of the case. And the reason why a lot of companies do that is if you do put the case on carpet and it squishes, it's not gonna choke off the power supply. But if you have a big enough gap too, it means that it's gonna be pulling air from inside the case anyway. So even if it is mounted down, it still could have some effect on the air pressure inside your case. Now, lastly, that I'm gonna be talking strictly to the water coolers here. If you are water cooling your system, it's good peace of mind to mount it face down if you can, because if you do accumulate some sort of a drip or a leak, God forbid it drips inside your power supply while it's on, which could lead to very bad day, very bad day. Uh, so if you mount it down, it's just a little bit extra peace of mind that's gonna drip on a solid piece of metal and it really has to work its way in there rather than just going, hey, just pour your sugar on me. Yeah, it's an 80s joke. It's, a, it's an 80s rock band thing. You're probably, some of you are probably too young to get it. But anyway, that's kind of it. Um, it's really that simple. A lot of people wanna make a big deal about mounting it face up, going, oh my God, you're gonna pull in all kinds of dust. You're gonna just wreck the airflow in your system. It really depends on your power supply too, how efficient it is, what kind of fan is in it, and what speed the fan spins at. A lot of these power supplies just don't spin very fast and not fast enough to have a big enough effect on your system. And if it does, well then try and balance it out with fan controllers and make your intake fans run faster or your exhaust fans run slower. Like in the, in the instance of my friend's system where I have the three 120 millimeter exhaust fans on the Predator plus the 120 exhaust fan in the rear, plus the fan facing up on the power supply with only 200 or two 140 millimeter intakes. People were freaking out that I created a negative pressure situation, which would, would be true if I ran all the fans at 100%. But I do balance out pressures. The Predator is only running at about 50% fan speed at max because it's overkill for the CPU. His power supply fan barely even turns on. And I do have the 140s running at 100% where the rear exhaust fan is also running at 50%. So there's some balance there. Anyway, guys, I hope this has clarified some of that. I apologize that sometimes I forget to start simple and start at the basics because uh, I've been doing this a long time and I have to be reminded that sometimes I have to start at the beginning and, and keep it simple. And uh, hopefully this video has helped you understand power supply orientation, not its sexual orientation. Thanks for watching. Share this video with someone you think it'll help. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.